Good afternoon and welcome to today's Vin City Motor Corporation webcast as part of the Planet Microcap Showcase. It is now my pleasure to turn the floor over to your host, William Trainer of Vin City Motor Corporation. Hello and thank you. Uh, I'm very uh, pleased to uh, present today. I'm William Trainer, founder, CEO, and president. Uh, we recently had a name change. We were uh, Grand West Transportation. We are now Vicinity Motor Corp. This updated name brings together our sales and marketing branding with our corporate identity as we move forward uh, to become a major player in the transportation industry in North America. Go to the next slide here. Yeah, so a little bit of a corporate uh, overview uh, for those that don't know the, uh, the uh, don't know us very well. We started back in 2008. Transit agencies across Canada were demanding a new product. They needed a mid-sized, low-floor transit vehicle that really would be able to pick up passengers in their neighborhoods and transport them into the uh, larger feeder routes. Nothing existed at the time. So we entered into a strategic partnership with the province of BC, with BC Transit, to design and build the vicinity branded buses. We received our first order uh, in 2014 and have grown to become a true success story uh, in Canada. We have a, a significant addressable market. With approximately 25,000 buses sold per, uh, each per year, uh, we've designed our products to be very competitively priced in each one of these uh, segments. We see the EV market really growing. Uh, most of our demand that we've had recently coming in uh, has all been uh, on the electric vehicle. As we can see, you know, electric vehicles are really, uh, um, really poised to take a big position in this, um, in this market uh, share. So our product overview. We have a vast range of products, all designed to dominate in their market space. EV is the future, but as we transition, we offer clean, near zero uh, buses such as the C&G bus. Our heavy duty market competes uh, in a product uh, of about uh, uh, 1,500 units sold per year. If you really look at where our 30 foot uh, compete on the heavy duty side, we have on the heavy duty side, we have the what we consider the, or we're going to call the electric bolt, the electric bus for our heavy duty uh, vehicles uh, in development. Uh, we have a lighter duty vehicle, uh, 26, 28 foot uh, is available as well. But really uh, what the momentum and really where the uh, uh, industry is going is our electric vehicle. And uh, this is a little uh, demonstration here of our electric 28 vehicle. I'll talk about it here a little uh, bit further. So our flagship vehicle, really the vicinity bus, this, uh, this mid-size heavy-duty vehicle, as I stated earlier, it's done extremely well in the Canadian market. Uh, we have about a 90% market penetration in the, uh, uh, in the Canadian market. We have over uh, 500 vehicles in operation today. We see an average uh, price of around $400,000, uh, and we're coast to coast here. What makes this bus really uh, uh, really dominate in its marketplace is that uh, if you compare it to a 40-foot bus, it really we see 33% fuel savings, 30% uh, uh, lower uh, capital costs, 30% uh, 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 lower operating costs. Um, it's got a very smooth ride, very stylish. So when you Enter the uh, market, particularly the um, uh, U.S. market. You need to have to sell to the public transit agencies in the U.S. You need three things. One, you need to uh, produce the bus in the United States, which we do. We have a, a new facility that we're actually producing down in Washington State. You also need to have uh, a high U.S. content, 70% U.S. content. Uh, we check that box. And the other box that you really need is you need to have the the bus tested. You need it tested uh, uh, by the uh, Federal Transportation Administration um, at, at a test facility 
uh, in Altoona, Pennsylvania, and hence the name of the test is called the Altoona test. Uh, our, if you compare our 30-foot bus, uh, we sent it down to do the testing. Really, they take the bus and put about a 12-year life expectancy on it in a very short period of time. Our 30-foot vicinity bus really received the best in class. And this is a public document. You could, you could actually pull it up on the uh, um, Altoona test site, and you could actually decipher it and see. But the transit authorities in the U.S. really use this uh, test to see what the longevity of the bus is going to be and what, what they expect, the, uh, uh, how it's going to stand up in the marketplace. So our vehicles are purpose-built. When we say purpose-built, it means we've really designed these vehicles from the ground up to dominate in the marketplace they are. Uh, when we look at uh, in the uh, medium-duty space, you know, as I stated earlier, you know, traditionally there's a 40-foot bus, um, and uh, then you drop down from there. There's the mid-size units, and then you look on the smaller end of the scale is the cutaway uh, units. They're really a, a, a cabin chassis uh, with a body built on the back, have a very uh, 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 short life ex uh, ex uh, expectancy on it. And this is really where we compete in. We compete in the mid-sized uh, mid bus uh, with a uh, vastly superior product that's purpose-built. But really, when we're looking at it, and what a lot of people are looking at, and probably a lot of uh, investors today are looking at, is you know where the industry is going, and the, the industry is transitioning towards electric vehicles. And this is where I think we really, really shine. Uh, our electric vehicle, we uh, uh, announced it and brought it into the marketplace here earlier this year, beginning of this year, and we've had a lot of interest on the vehicle. We've had a lot of interest from from customers, really, you know. Uh, Canadian-wide and U.S.-wide, uh, just launching the vehicle. We've already pre-sold 15 of them. We have 25 of these vehicles in production as we speak, and we should have the first five ready for demonstrating purposes here in June. Uh, the vehicle, uh, we really feel we're going to be super competitive and uh, have a uh, take over this market space for this mid-sized vehicle because we really designed this vehicle um, with uh, what the automotive industry. We aligned ourselves more with what the automotive industry is doing um, uh, for the electric vehicles. And what the automotive vehicle do is they, they're, they're producing a very thin battery pack. Um, they produce a battery pack that's usually around seven inches thick. We entered into a supply agreement uh, with BMW to uh, uh, supply our batteries for this vehicle. And Having a thin battery like that allows us to really embed that battery into the low floor section of the bus. And I think this is key, and this is what's going to separate us apart from the competition. Embedding into the low floor section of the bus gives it a very low center of gravity. Also, the battery pack in itself is a 400-volt battery pack, uh, which allowed us to put an onboard charger on. And the 400-volt battery packs allow us to charge this vehicle on an overnight charging on a standard electrical grid. When I say a standard electrical grid, when you look at the electrical power source that's available in, in Canada and in the US, it's really a, a 240 volt, uh, you know, 100 or 200 amp services going into most, uh, most uh, uh, complexes or um, uh, residential uh, homes. So this, this vehicle, when we sell it, it's sold with a, with a cord that allows you to actually charge it on a 240 volt single phase power. And that separates us from the competition considerably. The competition is using more of an industrial grade battery, a commercial grade battery that's 800 volts. And the battery is usually uh, eight, uh, the battery is usually 12 to 14 inches thick, which doesn't allow them to put it in the low floor section of the bus is what, in, and that's what the, the customer base wants. So the competition has been forced to look to where they can put the batteries, and in most instances, the batteries go on top of the roof, which makes it an extremely top-heavy uh, vehicle. By aligning ourselves more with the automotive industry, uh, it's, it's allowed us to choose off-the-shelf components, much like the electric motors that we put in the back of our vehicle. Um, we have designed all of our uh, uh, power uh, distribution, our ECMs, our battery management, 
all of that was designed in the house. And this is really what allows us to buy that off the shelf automotive uh, quality um, uh, components. When you look at the automotive industry in general, when, it, when a new vehicle is coming to life, the automotive industry really has their uh, sights set on a million vehicles per year. And that's what gets the volume up and gets, uh, gets the supply chain building the components that are really come in more competitively priced. So our vehicle, we anticipate our vehicle are really selling between $300,000 and $350,000 U.S. dollars in the market. When we look at the competition, the competition, uh, we see a lot of them coming in at between uh, 600000 to six to $700,000. And the reason for that is not that the components are, are higher quality. It's that in the commercial side, the components are very expensive. Um, uh, so I think we have a major advantage entering the market with a vehicle uh, like ours, and I think it's going to dominate the space. This is just really some more key features about uh, about the bus. So when we look at the North American market in general, uh, we look at you know the Canadian market. We've done extremely well here, but in the U.S. market space, part of our strategy, part of our uh, growth strategy is really we need to assemble the bus ourselves in the U.S. and and that is in part because the U.S. is broken up into the private sector and the public sector. In Canada, we really only see the, uh, the public sector up here. We're selling to mostly transit authorities. But in the U.S., you need to, to sell into that public sector. Uh, you need to produce the bus yourself. So we chose Washington State to put a factory in place down in Washington State. We chose Washington because it's a 30-minute drive from our headquarters here in, Van in Vancouver. Uh, as we have developed our product and support our product, we have a very large engineering group here. We have over 25 uh, engineers in our Vancouver location. So putting the headquarters in Washington allows us to share a lot of those resources on both sides of the border um, and keep our, uh, keep our costs down and keep us uh, extremely competitive. The other thing that we've done for our aggressive uh, U.S. growth strategy is we really need to – uh, align ourselves with uh, a strong distribution group. So if you go back and look at some of our uh, past news releases we have, we've aligned ourselves very strongly with the ABC group of companies. The ABC group of companies is really a, a, a powerhouse. Uh, you know, they're, they're coast to coast. Uh, they have uh, sales in the, uh, in the bus industry averaging around 500 million a year and another 100 million in, in their parts distribution. So they have the parts and service and the capability to really look after the product uh, to the level that we want to. So we're gonna leverage a lot of what they have in place to uh, uh, help us with our growth strategy in the US. You know, particularly we look at uh, California. California on the EV side is, is a state that you need to be in. Uh, California, we're gonna see a lot of sales come out of that California market. They're really driving uh, the push for the EV market. And if we look at the, the ABC group of companies, they have three very large facilities in California uh, alone, um, which will really help us uh, penetrate that market. So we are in a very early stage of attractive organic growth. Uh, we have manufacturing capacity in place. The Washington State facility can do 1,000 uh, units a year. We have contract manufacturing available to us to do another 2,000 units. So we're positioned to really capture 3,000 units uh, per year. Um, and when we look at the, uh, the U.S. side with the vehicles that we have entering into it, we see a very strong uh, runway ahead of us. Financials, one of the things I want to touch on here is that, you know, when we look at our company and where we position ourselves in the marketplace, you know, we're an existing company. We have existing sales. We have an existing infrastructure in place. We're delivering over $50 million in backlog here in Q1 and Q2 alone uh, uh, this year, um, uh, which really separates us apart from a lot of the competition that's coming in uh, and would like to, you know, jump into the market and, and gain market uh, penetration, particularly on the EV side. 
Well, we're there and we're delivering buses as we speak. A lot of the buses we're delivering to date are CNG buses. CNG is a is a nice transition as as the uh, industry is transitioning towards uh, electric vehicles. Uh, CNG, uh, you know, a lot of the people like to say that the CNG is a near zero emission vehicle. Uh, just in the last uh, 30 days alone, you, we've had a lot of uh, new orders come in that are that are CNG. Now, when you look at the management, you know, a lot are saying, okay, how are you going to get us? How are we going to get that aggressive growth strategy in the U.S.? Well, you need the management in place to do that. So, uh, you know, I've been here uh, since day one. I'm a founder, president, and CEO. We have a very strong board of directors. We have a very strong uh, management team in place. One of our recent uh, uh, hires is Manuel Achadina uh, as our uh, uh, chief operating officer. Uh, he's a very interesting uh, uh, person. As he ran uh, BC Transit, uh, they had over a $350 million uh, operating budget and um, over $150 million uh, capital budget per year. Uh, he's been one of the champions uh, for our vehicle. He's one of the uh, uh, people that I entered into the agreement for uh, when we first entered into a strategic partnership with the province of BC with BC Transit. So we have a very strong team in place, and we're really uh, positioned well, I think, to uh, to capture a lot of the market. So key takeaways that I want to leave you with, you know, uh, we are delivering buses. We're in the industry. We have an established brand that has done extremely well on the Canadian side. We feel we've got an extremely capital light uh, um, uh, model. Uh, we do utilize uh, um, contract manufacturing as well. We have a very strong backlog we're delivering on. We've entered uh, into the market with an EV that I think is vastly superior to anybody else in the marketplace. Uh, it's positioned well, both price uh, and uh, product. Uh, we see EV tailwinds. You know, the governments, in order to capture a lot of this growth, uh, you need to have the funding in place for it. And we see extreme funding on both sides of the border, uh, 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 for the uh, EVs uh, um, to grow the industry. And that's what I'll leave you with uh, today. Uh, I'll open it up now for some uh, questions and answers. Uh, thank you. Okay, first uh, question. Will your electric buses be compatible with wired up roads or roads uh, with coils that can charge as it moves forward, uh, given the large surface of the uh, area of the bus, have you considered adding solar panels or another uh, fuel source? Well, you know, we feel that we're on the cutting edge. We would like to stay uh, in tune with whatever's coming up. We are looking at some wireless charging as we speak. I haven't looked at anything that has anything to do with the wired up coils in the road. Uh, uh, usually for us, we're driven by what the, uh, what the customer's asking for, and we haven't had anybody ask for that yet. On an existing um, fuel source, uh, I uh, expect that you're asking about hydrogen. Again, you know, we, we try to build and produce what the industry is asking for. We haven't had any request uh, for anything uh, uh, for for hydrogen power to date. Uh, okay, next question. How much cash have you generated from the backlog of the 50 million and what backlog uh, after the 100 vehicles? You know, we have the 50 million is over 100 vehicles that we have that we're delivering. We have deliveries going out every day right now. Um, we still have a substantial amount. We, you know, this isn't the end of it. We do have uh, vehicles to deliver in uh, in Q3 and Q4. We really haven't gone out and given any guidance, but you know, I can state that uh, you know we are projected to do uh, a minimum of 150 units. Uh, if everything lined up, we definitely you know could get higher than that, but uh, we won't uh, we won't do less than uh, than 150 uh, this year. Uh, have you been in talks with California? I understand you've gone through phase. You know, on the public side, uh, 
that contract, uh, everybody can understand that there is a contract in play in California. I am not uh, at liberty to really speak about it here in this uh, forum today. But uh, California does have an open contract. That's all I can say at this, uh, at this time. Who, where do you source your uh, E uh, batteries from? Well, we look at, when we look at our uh, supply chain, we're, we're looking at a supply chain, not just one. We want two supply chains for all of our major components. So we have a, a, a very good supply chain in place with BMW. Uh, they've been a great supplier to date, but uh, we do have alternative uh, sourcing available uh, as well. Next question. It seems the eBus is getting some real traction today. Biden's releasing a lot of funds. Uh, uh, does uh, uh, VMC expect to be one of these vendors? Yes, we do. You know, we expect to capture a great percentage of the funding that's coming available for the EV business. As I stated earlier, you know, I think our vehicle is extremely well priced compared to some of the competition, and that's going to play a big part of it, but not just well priced. I think it's, uh, it really um, fits well with the, with, the, with the consumer and the customer. You know, if, if a lot of you have heard me speak um, about, the, uh, about the vehicle. You know, we designed this vehicle really to, um, uh, to be easily charged and easily used. Um, our uh, infrastructure for the electrical, I think, is uh, much better than what the competition is, is, uh, is um, uh, having out there. You know, one of the other things that we did is we put um, hydraulic brakes on our on our uh, electric vehicle. We followed what the school bus industry was doing, and and we did that for ease of use for the for the consumer, not just on the public side, but on the private side as well. You know, our heavy duty vehicles all have air brakes. Air brakes require a commercial air brake ticket. The hydraulic brakes don't. So I think that again is going to make a a, a very uh, uh, compelling um, uh, uh, consideration for people buying our vehicles. Who does the maintenance on the 500 buses in operation? Well, actually, we've got over 500 in operation here in Canada, and I think we've got 150 in operation in the U.S. as we speak. Um, so what happens on the public side and this is particularly in Canada, uh, and it, it's the same in the U.S., when the public side, the transit authorities are buying the vehicles, they're buying them to service them themselves. They all have their own in-house garages. Um, so we're only providing really technical support and the parts support uh, for the public side. On the private side, you need to have service centers in place. A lot of the customers are going to bring them back, and that's why you know we've aligned ourselves you know, with this ABC group. If you looked up, They've got mega locations right across the, the, the country as well, and then we have some other uh, dealers that we deal with as well. So on the private side, they're looking to have the bus serviced by a, by a, a standard garage, and, and we do provide that. Next question, are you planning to produce buses which run on hydrogen? We haven't seen any inquiries for people asking for hydrogen. You know, if the industry changed and that's what they were looking for, of course we'd look at hydrogen. But to date, we, we haven't had a single inquiry on hydrogen. Can I comment on the timing? No, I can't comment on the timing of the NASDAQ listing. You know, um, we are looking to, to uplist on the NASDAQ, and that's all I can say. Uh, just stay tuned. We'll bring out information as it, uh, as it uh, comes available. Are there any ideas for autonomous driving? Yes, you know, we are looking at companies that provide autonomous. Uh, we'd like to partner up with one and we're in discussions right now with some. You know, that is in the future, but it is something that we want to uh, stay, uh, stay abreast of as well. Well, that's all the uh, Q&A I see. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us today and uh, hearing my presentation. If you have any further inquiries, you know, please reach out to uh, um, to the MZ Group. Uh, that would be vmc at mcgroup.us. 
uh, and they'd be uh, more than happy to, to answer questions or put you in touch with uh, any of the senior management there that can uh, uh, provide any further uh, questions. So thank you. Thank you all today. Appreciate it.